Hey girl, it's good to see you. How have you been? The He is miracle food. It's the best for detoxing, cleansing, healing, removing inflammation, and boosting your immune system. It's suitable for all ages, and it helped me out tremendously during pregnancy. Allergen-free, gluten-free, 100% organic, all natural, and vegan. Chakradoctor.org. C-H-A-K-R-A-D-O-C-T-O-R dot O-R-G. Chakradoctor.org. 818-429-1675. Five course meals, that's us. We the inventors of the science and mathematics. We the inventors of astronomy and astrology. Cushion Egyptian, ancient African DNA. It's all in my biology. Hope my people are proud of me. I'm just setting the light on a lot of dark places in our society. Minds covered in poverty. Universal creator, hear me, cause I'm praying for you to get us out of it. Uh, wicked nations run by the corporations. So let me ask you, what do you think, now that you started doing this, what do you think's like the illest historical hip-hop uh, memorabilia-type item that you might possess? Whether it be like a Jay-Z. Oh, he doesn't write his lyrics down, but shit. But if you had a paper where he did oh, write funny it. funny enough, I have a Sadat X rhyme book. Oh. oh wow. Oh. Okay. For me. Like a minute ago and shit. Oh, fact, yeah, I just yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Have, and he just I, I have Ron book. Get the fuck uh, out of here! I swear, <laughs> I, I put that on my mom who just left my crib, asking me, "Send me the link to where you're streaming so I can watch it." Yes, I put that on my mom. I have a Sadat. How you get? Uh, how you get? Um, no, I, I, I'm gonna I'm I'm tell you how you got it. Cause that nigga be fucking losing mad. Fr First of all, your lighting, was, <laughs> lighting was great now, just. No, I'm about to, show you I'm about to say, damn, you you, you, you just lit up. <laughs> you might want to stay where you're at, cause your lighting looks great. Um, so, <laughs> the type of motherfucker that be losing a lot of shit. He loses, right. he loses. You know, oh, so I'm sure he probably lost the rhyme book up in. Calliope or or the cutting room or one of them shits and niggas said, Oh, this is Sadat I'll, I'll, I'll give I'll give you a rhyme. I'll give you a rhyme. Hold on. Because oh, black brothers no. need sons and not children that's been killed by guns. Ooh, that was in there. Damn. This the is the mic that, this is the mic that this is the mic that recorded the blueprint. Oh wow. anything else that was ever Rockefeller recorded. Wow! Wow! There's two others, but I'm not gonna pull them out. They're, they're in a closet, and I, that would that would be work. But I always keep that one out just as a reminder. Nice. I ha I have some things. Um, but I think the coolest thing. Uh, I actually know it. I, I actually no. I don't want to violate. I'm not gonna get into that. But I have um a um a rap hero um uh, uh a hero of ours is about to get commem commemorated in a very big way. Um, input from the highest institutions of memorialization, and I'm blessed and honored to have been a part of that. I'm going to get at that. Okay. You guys are about to see in the next year or so, but okay, so that, that's not mine. You can't give us the baby scoop. Can't give us the baby scoop. But, okay. <laughs> what I think happens is because people know that I have random things, I get the random calls. Right. So it's like, hey, you, do you know anybody who has this? And I'm like, yeah, I know the guy that made it. Oh, do you have this? Yeah, I actually have a copy of it sitting in my theater. Or I have a sort of at a family member's house. And I'm able to just put it where it needs to be. You know, um, um, I've said this a lot over the last while, especially over uh, 20, 2020 and 2021. Um, we have to die with our laptops empty. Die with your hard drive empty. Mm. Die with your brain empty. Mm. Um, that's something that I feel like more of us need to do. Part of me, I'm just plugging my phone back in. Just Blaze got your favorite rapper's reference tracks. <laughs> I do. I, it was a lie. It was all a lie. <laughs> no, it was. It was. It was. No, I'm just fucking with you. I'm just... One of the things that led to me starting to write for people, or or give people references for you know certain moves like i gotta thank pharrell for that because there, no wrong with that no not at all hell no all right. and, and digger you you and i have argued about this on twitter but like 
No, wait. Oh, wait. Uh, I we remember. had a different argument. We had our, different yeah, argument. our argument was <laughs> is, 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 it okay, with somebody. is it okay to take <laughs> help? Is it okay to take help with your lyrics? I was like, no. What was it? Or can you be considered a great? So, so, I'm like, so, absolutely no circumstance. Let me, argue, let me argue with my sister real quick. Okay. okay. Come on. Please, Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Please, we please can't wait to see this one. one. Please so, take my job, brother. Go ahead. Go for if it. We're in the booth, or if we're in the studio, right? And you and you spit a line to me, and I say no. Those last four bars should be this. And you say no, and then I say yes, they should be. And then you, you understand where I'm coming from. And then you spit those bars. You're not a fraudulent MC. It's well, much different, in my opinion. Here's if what I would do. If okay. No, because because we. A lot of us from our generation, even though you're a few years older than me, I'm still from the generation where we took what, what our artists said as Bible, as gospel, and it came from them, right? But that, to me, at the same time, if somebody helped you understand your identity or helped you get to a point of explaining your identity and who you are or, or who you were, and it was the last four bars of your, of your verse, does that does that mean that you didn't write your rhymes and you're inauthentic? No. Here's my now now here's my. I thing. agree with you, sir. Here's my. <laughs> thing. Exactly. Nigga, I gave I gave you party and bullshit before it was done. You can tell oh. me no no oh. I came I came to you. Oh. I, came, <laughs> no, I, I came to you. Of the concept. I came to you and said, I want you to do, no, how did it go? I came you, to you I and said. I want you to do a better version I of said, what you did for Joe. I said, I want you to do the exact same thing. No, you, a better version. Uh, a, a better version, uh, right, of what you did for Joe. <laughs> yes. I want a better she version stuck. of look, 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 Now she's stuck. Now she's stuck. And, Wait, and, I, I, no, and, I, here, and here's the thing. I knew that you were actually in the clubs, whereas if I'm like, Joe, I don't know if Joe was really in the clubs like that. You would understand these records. Like, in other words, here's what I mean by that. But wait, hang on, hang on. Wait, wait, wait. Before you go there, let me, okay. let me, let me rebut now. If I, me being the MC I am, if an MC says to me, like, taking direction is one thing. Taking bars to me, me personally, is a whole separate animal. Four bars like, of a song? Come on. Bro. Four <laughs> bars and four bars. Now, 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 let me, now, let me. The greatest take bars, like, seriously, like, like. Now, now, let me tell, now, let me tell, I mean, like, but, that means oh, that we have shit, no that's, that's them. That's, that's what separate them from me. Hey, uh, and I would it is never, what it is. And I would never argue that because you are my favorite female rapper ever. Thank you. That's all I'm saying. And, that's and, that's part, and that's part of the reason why I love you because, for better or worse, like once you get past the, the, uh, the uh, particulars or whatever, that's a goal that you stick to. And that, I that that that, that is a goal. Like understand, like Rodriguez's mantra is, "I write my own rhymes." Like that is something. Right. But you had to do, and, and you know what? I feel Thank like you, if, if you uh, if you weren't a woman, that might not apply as much. And because you were, and I don't mean I, and I, that's not a good thing by any means. But I feel like it's what am what am I trying to say the right way? I don't, I don't want to trip myself up here because I could end up in a, in a really bad place. You as a woman who writes their own bars puts you in such a good place. That, that's what I was trying to say. I got you. So if anybody's trying to say, oh, I wrote this, I wrote that, that's a discredit to you because of the way the culture is perceived and because of the way the art form is perceived. And then that makes your fight that much harder. Right, and right. you as a woman, I, you probably feel like I got to work twice as hard because I am a woman to prove myself so I can't dare take the four bars from, from, a, from a motherfucker, whereas a dude might not feel that same pressure in exactly. hip-hop. You know what I'm saying? You know what? Yeah, yeah like it was, yeah, like it was, like it was purposeful. It was purposeful for me to not take bars. But now I'll give, now I'll give you an example of some help I got with Imperial. Wait, is, um, this, is, it, wait, is this the first time you're admitting this? 
Uh, you, you, might be, you might be getting a Rod Digger scoop. You might be getting okay. a Rod Digger scoop. Well, no. now, for for Imperial... No, um, no. One of my favorite albums of all time. It was, it was Buster's idea to do the flip mode, the Imperial, but I had to write the word. Like, when it came time for that, you know, because he's a guy. And... When he was listening, when I was writing to that beat, he did. He came in the room and was like, "Remember the um, r- remember the past the Dutchie joint." Melody. I was like, and you listened to him. I was like, word, that was word. And then I and I and then I came up with the words. I wouldn't let. But that's but that in a way is a variation of what he's talking about right now. Like that. That That's is something, a, and even though he didn't give you the words, he still gave you something that you ended up. No, using. but that's but that's but fine. That doesn't take away see, from her writing. I don't, her own shit. I don't right. have a see. I don't have a problem with that. For one, I, that that's a problem if he gave you the words. I don't have a. I don't have a prop for one. I don't have a problem if it's <laughs> if it lends itself to a hook. And right, number right. and number two, number number two, it's uh. When you're, I just feel like when you're writing your, when you're writing your rhymes, like your rhymes is supposed to be your story. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it, like if, if when we're talking the business of rap, like, yeah, we need to, we need this particular type of record to deal with this particular politic of the situation. I don't want to get caught too long in this topic right here, but I hear what you're saying. But, um, okay. Here's what's interesting to me, Jamal, pardon me. Can I just mm-hmm. say one thing? What's interesting is that there's this distinction of all right, well, he helped me write the hook, but not the rhymes. Which right. to me is interesting because the hook ultimately is what helps sell the record. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Sometimes but that's, that's a business it's, thing. So it's like, right, that that it's it, there's this there's this distinction with some of us from a certain era, um, myself included, where Writing the hook is okay, or somebody else writing the hook, or performing the hook, or performing and writing the hook is okay as long as the person writes their own rhymes. Like, what if the what? So then, what happens if? And I'm going to leave this as an open-ended question. We're not going to talk about it. We're just going to debate it offline. What happens if the person wrote the entire hook, or the artist wrote the entire hook and didn't write any of their rhymes? Then what? I can't. I you. Hey, people could get we'll ghost writers all they want. I can't put you. I can't put you in like greatest MC conversations if nope. people are helping you write your rhymes. That's that's my that's my qualm. If you got that, help once, that can help with ghost writers. I I, I here's the thing. I, I'm gonna say this. I feel Why like everybody like, think I'm bleaching my skin. I'm sorry. I Time out. It's it's the lights, guys. I don't know. <laughs> like I'm sorry. I'm, I feel like not, if I know more than four <laughs> bars of your verse. If somebody gave you more than four bars, then that to me is like I right, they helped you write your shit, and that's illegal. But I give I give a four bar grace period of, like you said. Uh. You know what I mean? I'll give a four-bar <laughs> four grace period within the rhyme. Just like if somebody there, you know, like especially when you're in a group and you might be at the end and, and, they might be, and you might be stuck and they say, yo, why don't you just say this? And you're like, ah, oh, you know what? That is good. All right, fuck There's nothing wrong with that. I think four. there is nothing wrong with that. It's four. Four. Two four. Four. Beyond, right, so here, I think here's my opinion overall. Here's my beyond opinion. that, it's, it's too much. Here's my argument over there. Excluding the hook, though. Excluding the hook. I'm not talking about the hook. Right, but why does the hook matter? Four bars becomes four bars, four and a I half bars, and one line here's from here's the, the hook. Last thing that I'm gonna and say one line from the hook becomes the whole Some people write good rhymes and suck at writing hooks. Right, but what if some people write great hooks but suck at writing rhymes? I'd rather write good you. rhymes. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. But I'd rather but, write good not, rhymes. Oh, I'm, I'm not arguing for can make here. records, but we're saying that those people right there can't be considered a goats as far as greatest MCs. You know, they can't be talked about in certain. All right. So, I know, and, and, and I, that's on who? Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> I I agree with that. What I will say is that I don't think anybody who's been in the goat MC conversation is in that place. 
Right. Buster just, I just saw that video on Buster who said, he said he was on uh, Drink Champs. He said, if you don't put it down on the pen yourself, you can't be in the greatest whatever. Nope. If you have ghost writers, you can't be considering any of that shit. No, I, 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 I got all, all respect to you. No, all respect to Bust. That, that is literally, literally my big brother. I told him this just a, yes. just a bit before last. If you have a catalog of eight albums, I'm using a random number. And somebody helped you with a bar here and a bar there, or more than four bars on a song here and a song there on your album, because they heard something you did and, and figured out how you could do it better. I think you're still or, okay. Or you were, or speaking from experience, you were stuck and couldn't figure out how to fin finish up those last four bars, and they said, "Yo, this is how you end it." To me, that does not discredit you from the conversation. No, it does now, not. No, it does no. not. Now, 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 if your whole Part of, my, part of my language, mom. If your whole shit was a sham and you were Millie vanilla it the whole time, that's mm, a different right. story. Right. right. I think I can relate this to stand-up comics. They go, I know Chris Rock has some writers, but Chris writes most of his shit, but he'll have... I've had I've I have other comedians give me a dope-ass punchline like, yo, you know what you can do with that joke? Oh, thanks. You use it. But it still makes you the shit because you wrote most of the shit. And it's okay right. someone comes outside and goes, you should do and, that because you need that outside sometimes. And, and, and thank you for bringing up that analogy because there are plenty of times where it's like, all right, somebody wrote your show, like your stand-up show. Yeah. You're like, like it, bugged my, it bugged me out. Like, I wanted to be a, I, I'm, not, I'm not a funny guy at all, right? But I wanted to be a funny guy so bad. <laughs> And George Carlin was my hero. Yeah. I think if you go to my to my clubhouse, yeah. I think if you go to my clubhouse avatar right now, George George might still be my avatar. Dope. And he was my hero. My life changed when I saw his stand up special. I think it, when did we get cable? Eighty nine or nine? You must have saw jamming in New York. It was it was the HBO one night stand. Oh, oof, man. When he yeah. ended it, when he brought out his dog Tuppy, like that, me and you can have a whole other conversation about this, right? <laughs> but I wanted to be George Carlin more than anything else. Yes. And when and when the credits rolled, and I saw written by, you were like, "What?" Right. But you know what? You fast forward 20, 30 years later, me as a as a producer, as a songwriter, I've seen written by, or I've been a part of written by. But I can tell you this right now. If those artists had written, or if those artists had spit some of the stuff that I had wrote, if I had spit some of the stuff that they had that I that I had contributed, it wouldn't have been the same. It wouldn't have had the same impact. Because I'm not a good artist. So at what point do we differentiate? Like, all right, fine. This person didn't write everything, but they delivered it in a right way that that contributed and impacted the listener and our culture, and maybe motivated our culture to produce more great writers. So we should have great performers. That would make separate. them. That would make. I was just about to say that we would have make a separate category. Good performers. For a good, right, but, for but, but where, Milli but, Vanilli but rappers. But my question is, where do you draw the line? Are we still using the four-bar analogy? Or the four-bar uh, example? Uh, again, if so, again, if somebody came out and was like, oh, wait, those last 10, 10 albums? No, he didn't write any of that. And, he, and it sounded like he was writing from a personal perspective? That's one thing. Like say for example, like Jay, Jay for example, and I, I, I hate to use Jay in anything because, because of my close relationship to him, right? But if he came out for reasonable doubt to Blueprint Three or to Magna Carta or whatever, and it was like, yeah, that whole journey he took you on, yeah, none of that was real. Obviously, then you're like, yeah, yeah, this is terrible. This, this should not happen. But there are certain artists where it's like, all right. He wasn't really speaking from his perspective. He was just making good songs. We don't look at Gwen Stefani and be like, oh, you weren't really a holler back girl. You were actually a scholastic whatever. 
Paul Mooney wrote for I don't know. I don't know. Paul Mooney wrote for Richard Pryor, too. Keenan Arnold. But why? But why? Why do we not make that case on Mary J. Blige? Because MCing because MC is MCing. Like, oh, like once we start. Why is not RB singing? RB singing. Because singers are singing. MCing is you're supposed to be writing your own rhymes. Like that was the it's, it's implied that it was the, never that that was, that was, was the foundation that. of you it go, from day one. If you go back to the to the 70s, there's there's still stories of actually this this person wrote this this rhyme for this person. Right. Well, Big Bang Hank took Grandmaster Kaz's rhymes. I mean, so, I'm, I'm, even, even before that, I'm that I'm well aware. Was? I'm 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 well aware that there are several pioneers and legends and OGs that it'll probably go to the grave, or if it's not it's out there that that didn't write. But I'm saying, you know, that was always at least the the rules that I grew up learning and applying. And that's why you're to, special. Is and revered on a certain tier because you are not that yeah, is let's, a let's take this real quick to, to a producer's level. Do you believe that Dr. Dre is one of the greatest producers? A thousand percent. Right. Yet he's he's claimed he's produced things that he didn't produce. I, that, I disagree with that. So well, so he, this, he, is, this is what I was just, uh, a story that was just told to us last night. Let me let me just tell you this just real quick. Um, so we had we had uh, Inspector Deck on last night, and he was asked why he was taking off this song, this Tupac song. Um, so originally the song was done for Daz. Daz did the beat, right? Now. Somehow it goes to uh he brought it to uh to 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 to, to Dre for it to be mixed or something like that. Tupac comes home, Dre plays the joint for him, and told and this is out of uh Daz in him's mouth, not mine. That uh, Dre tells Pac that he he did the beat, and he ends up taking people off the song, including Inspector Deck, Rage, a whole bunch of people, only left Red Man and Method Man on the joint. And so later, when 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 Pac found out that uh, Dre didn't have the uh, didn't actually make the beat, that actually caused friction between them two. And this is a story that I just heard them uh, them tell. So, and that's that's the, that's the experience I'm talking about. So what I'm saying is, if that's true, right? We already know that Dre has made some of the illest shit in hip hop. That can never be made. I don't give a fuck if he did say that he did some shit and didn't do it. That doesn't take away from his greatness. That's all I'm trying to say. Here, here's my thought on that. And I guess this applies to um, my idea on MCs. Producers have production teams, though. It's like... No, no but, but that, that's not always... That's not even what, I, what I'm getting. I'm, I'm sorry, Diggle. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, uh-uh. I, I, I was just... Uh, Going in, into what he said, my thought on, thought on that is, is that ultimately, if you actually, I can say this very easily. Why am I even thinking about this? First of all, just because you made the beat doesn't mean you mean you. Just because you made, the, just because you made the beat doesn't mean you produced the record. Mm. Okay, like yep. Qu Quincy he Jones didn't, didn't play all. The, Quincy Jones didn't play S H I T on Human Nature, but he heard the record and said, "You should cut this." You can go and get. I mean, you used to have to dig for them. Now you can get all the uh, expanded editions of Thriller and Off the Wall, where you hear the demos that Michael was making in his house with Janet and Latoya and Jermaine. You know, with like. Janet on the 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 what do you call those the um the glasses playing like the doo, 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 doo. and he's sing and he's singing day and night and if I'm not mistaken it's Jermaine or somebody else playing the playing the synth bass and then he but those songs could have came out and been considered a mess or laughed at or you send them to Quincy and Quincy says okay this is the vision this is who we need to get to play drums this is who we need to get to, to do X Y and Z. I was not there for anything Dre related, so I cannot say who did what. What I can say is that when you listen to the 
of Dr. Dre lineage, you hear the progression of the progression and the consistency of Absolutely. the sound. So do I mean we I, I think I don't think it's a secret that he wrote every rhyme or made every beat. Do I think it's a fact that he executed the vision on every project he was tasked to? Yes. And that's the job of a producer. It's not to make a beat, it's to execute a vision. And it took me a long time to learn that. Like me and Puff had had issues for a while because we were working on a project together and he was like, yo, so by the way, my name's gonna be the first on every song. And I was like, what? <laughs> but that was in like, the right, right. But I'm like, you, you didn't touch a drum machine, you didn't. Do and then I was, and, and it took me a minute to understand. Like they, this didn't come from him; it came from my own thought and just knowing my own, know, knowing my own history of my, my music and my people's music. And I'm like, oh yeah, he didn't really, uh, or this producer didn't play the strings and the drums and this. He knew what songwriter to put with what artist, to put with what engineer, to put with what orchestra, to make this sound like this, and then who to have mastered. And ultimately, that is the job of the producer. Now, maybe we're, the conversation we're having is that um, beat makers need a production credit as a beat maker within our culture or within electronic music in general. That might be the case. But trust, I mean, y'all already know, not every person who makes the beat produces the record. Did you? You've produced your own records. Right. Without You're making right. the beat. 